Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Zedicon video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with the PlayStation 5 pricing. Sony are yet to officially confirm the target price point for the next generation system. Mark Cerny, who is, of course, the system's lead architect, and he also served as the lead architect for the PS4, as well as the PlayStation Vita, has only said that the price point will be compelling given the feature set of the system. Hideki Yusuda, who is an analyst, is predicting that the next generation PlayStation will launch at $499. US dollars. As a slight aside, I actually have a poll going on Twitter right now. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. It's going to be active for the next 24 or 48 hours. I don't honestly remember how long I said it for. Well, I'm asking people what they think Sony will be charging for the next generation PlayStation currently. Uh, just for your FYI, uh, there's over 80% of people predicting that the PlayStation uh, 5 is going to cost 499 bucks. Now, that's a lot of cash for a system, certainly more expensive than, let's say, the PS4 launched, but you also have to take into account that this system is going to have a lot of technology. The CPU inside of it is going to be based on Zen 2, and we actually have a lot of Zen 2 news in just a moment, as well as some Zen 3 information, and... It's going to have a powerful Navi-based GPU, it's going to have a lightning-fast uh, SSD in there, and so on and so on. In other words, the system is probably not going to be cheap to manufacture. I wouldn't be surprised if, even at $499, US Sony were not making a huge amount of profit per system. Although, obviously, we don't know information such as yields or some of the other component costs yet inside the, inside the system. And my personal opinion of the pricing really comes down to what Microsoft are going to be doing because there's a couple of different uh, ways that this could play out. The first is that Sony and Microsoft could launch at different time periods. For example, Microsoft might launch after Sony or we might see Microsoft launch prior to Sony. But if, let's say, the two systems launch, or rather the Xbox and the PlayStation launch, pretty uh, similar in terms of t in terms of timing it's going to put both companies in a very unique position because microsoft have two different SKUs. they have the lower end SKU, lockhart and the more powerful system anaconda which means that it could be that people just opt for the playstation if the playstation is the cheaper price point because they just feel it's the better value out of the out of the systems on offer but that does depend on the performance difference between the PlayStation 5 as well as Anaconda. Then again, with Sony, Microsoft could be super aggressive at the price. So for example, if they charge $499 US for their high-end SKU and Sony are charging the same for the PlayStation 5, then people might say to themselves, well, hey, the next generation Xbox is more powerful than the PlayStation. At least that's what the rumors are saying right now anyway, that the PlayStation is going to be less powerful than the high-end uh, Xbox SKU, but obviously no one really knows for certain because we haven't had official confirmation of the specs. Sony have, to their credit, given a lot more information than what Microsoft have. Sony have confirmed it's going to be Zen 2 base with 8 cores, 16 threads, uh, is guessed, but we don't actually know that. Uh, Mark Sony didn't tell us whether it was going to have SMT, but it's almost certain it does. Uh, it said it's Narve based, but with heavy customization. There's ray tracing in there, but certain details such as bandwidth and so on were not presented to us, so we don't even know the amount of memory inside the PlayStation 5, although Rumour has it it's going to be 20 or 24 gigabytes of memory. With the Microsoft side of the equation, things are a little different because all we have is rumours and uh, and uh, supposed leaks, so we don't actually have any official confirmation, although I'm going to get to some Zen information in just a moment. So yeah, it's really down, to, in my opinion, down to the pricing. Now let's move over to the Ryzen clock frequency. This is actually an exclusive piece of information and carries over from what I was discussing a few days ago regarding a leak for a 16-core uh, Zen 2 Matisse part. Now this Zen 2 part was running at 4.2 gigahertz uh, for its boost frequencies, for its turbo frequencies. And that did raise some concerns of what the final clock frequencies would be for the uh, Matisse parts when they launch. 
Well, Jim over at Adore TV later chimed in that there were actually two different SKUs that were floating around to motherboard manufacturers, in addition to the really early engineering samples that we'd already covered uh, like a month or so ago. So these two latest parts are in addition to an earlier four-core part that we covered like a month or so ago, I believe. And the four-core part, four-core, eight-thread, although had really low clock frequencies and was a very early engineering sample, it was essentially there to do nothing more than make sure that the motherboard was compatible with Matisse, basically to help motherboard manufacturers tweak the BIOS and just kind of get the board up to task for when the later engineering samples start to emerge. And that's where we are now. So there are two engineering sample processes that are floating around for motherboard manufacturers. The first of which is the 16 core uh, processor that we saw a few days ago. So once again, 16 cores, 4.2 gigahertz uh, for the uh, turbo frequency. And we also have a 12 core part. Now, Jim at over Adore TV said that according to his sources, the clock frequencies for this processor were, quote, much faster than what we have for the uh, 16 core CPU. But he was not comfortable revealing the information uh, of the actual clock frequencies. So I actually spoke to a couple of my sources and I managed to wrangle the information out from them. According to what they have been told, the CPU is running at, drum roll please, duh, 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 5 gigahertz. Uh, so yeah, the 12 core part anyway is running 5 gigahertz. Although I don't know whether that's all core frequency or how that's actually splitting across the different cores. All they said is that the CPU is hitting up to 5 gigahertz currently. Um, and as for the 16 core uh, parts and whether there's going to be any clock frequency difference between it and the 12 core uh, CPUs, I just don't know yet. Uh, I did ask my source and they said that they don't know that information. Uh, they've been trying to find out, but currently the only two samples they're aware of is the 16 core uh, processor, which is running at 4.2 gigahertz, as well as the 12 core processor, which is running up to five gigahertz. If that's true, um, and it does end up being five gigahertz, that is gonna be really interesting from uh, just completely and utterly annihilating the current uh, status quo that we have right now in desktop processors. It's also going to essentially annihilate uh, AMD's own offerings such as Threadripper. Like, there are some usage uh, cases that I suspect people might decide to go for X399 if they need the additional uh, I.O. Let's say they need the additional PCIe lanes or whatever. But just generally speaking, I, I just don't see a reason that someone would go with the second generation Threadripper. And don't forget, uh, AMD have actually removed the right the Threadripper 3000 series from its roadmap that it previously had listed. So there's a couple of theories. One, they have decided to postpone Threadripper 3000 launch, or maybe they're not sure what to do. And this is actually something that another source told me, that the big like, hmm, what do we do with this? At AMD is trying to actually figure out from a marketing perspective what they do with the Threadripper processors and what they do with the Ryzen 3000 processors because obviously if you're offering a 16 core processor let's be super pessimistic just for the sake of this video and be super pessimistic and say that the 16 core processor only goes to 4.5 gigahertz. I don't think many people are going to need more than that, although it does depend obviously on how uh, the CPU does scale when it's doing a lot of multitasking uh, with only dual channel memory, but as I've said a couple of times now, I don't think that's going to be a problem in the vast majority of usage scenarios, although obviously uh, don't quote me on that until we do an awful lot of testing, so don't buy based upon my I don't think it's going to be a problem until obviously the reviews come in. There's also another interesting little tidbit, this is much smaller, uh, concerning the Ryzen 3000 series, and this has actually come from MSI, from their official Twitter account, from a very short video that they have posted on Twitter. It appears to be an X570 MEG Meg Ace, and it is very obscured. I mean, most of the board is hidden in shadows with only small portions of the board visible, like we can see the VRM a VRM heatsink, which does look fairly substantial, which does tie into previous rumors. You can see that the video has five, six, and seven. 
and just for a second on screen the number 3000 uh, is written so it does appear given that they are saying that this is going to be at Computex this is further confirmation as if we needed any that AMD will be debuting this stuff and actually uh, Kamichi Insanka on Twitter also found a series of listings from a Russian regulatory agency and this is several x570 motherboards including the uh, MEG X570 Godlike, which is, as the name would imply, one of MSI's highest end SKUs. And now we're going to finish the video off with some Zen free stuff. So, if you've been following the Xbox leaks for a while, you may be aware of what is supposedly a BIOS dump. Uh, and this BIOS dump shows that, uh, of the. And now we're going to start. And now we're going to finish the video off with some Zen free information. Now, bear in mind that I want you to proceed with an absolute truckload of salt because this is by far from confirmed. But if you look at AMD's own roadmap anyway, the Zen free design has been pretty much finished right now. In fact, Zen 4 now is currently in the process of being designed and Zen free is being on track. So, at least the feature set of the chip should be relatively set in stone by now, and obviously Zen 2 is, well, almost ready to be released. But the rumor has it that one of the key changes architecturally for Zen 3 is that it will no longer have uh, two, f two threads for SMT. So obviously when you have a regular one, if you disable uh, SMT, for uh, Ryzen, then you have one thread per core. If you enable SMT, it allows two threads to run simultaneously on that core, simultaneous multi-threading. Yes, uh, performance is not double uh, the throughput. So if you have SMT enabled, it's not like suddenly you get uh, twice the performance compared to having SMT disabled. It heavily depends upon the task the application, how it's programmed, how multi-threaded it is, and so on and so on. But certainly 20 to 50% performance improvement is pretty typical, uh, depending once again on the application. The rumor has it though, that Zen 3 is not going to have two threads when you enable SMT. It's going to be up to four threads for SMT. Now before you say, well, hey, that's impossible, it's actually not. Indeed, Intel's Xeon Phi processors, uh, which will actually be soon discontinued, I believe the discontinuation date is 2020, they actually have four-way SMT per core. So we also have other processors such as PowerPC-based processors, which also have more than uh, two threads handled per core. Now, obviously, and also the thing is, when you're running so many threads per core, things such as order of execution and thread scheduling become a lot more important. I suspect that if this is the case, we will also see a much greater amount of uh, cache level one instruction cache. We may see increased space in registers and so on and so on to accommodate these changes. And also this would be perfect for yields and binning as well. In fact, the rumor has it that not all of the Zen 3 processors will have up to four threads per core. Some will have uh, just three threads per core and some will have just two threads per core. So for example, the Ryzen 4000 series, assuming it does end up being called that and we don't see a Zen 2 Plus, so let's just call it the uh, Ryzen 4000 series, that might only have two or three threads per core. Threadripper might only have two or three threads per core, but for something like Epic, that would have all four threads available. One of the reasons behind that is obviously you've got greater uh, segmentation of the different product offerings. So for the sake of argument, if you only have three threads for the uh, for Threadripper, but you have four threads for Epic, that's one reason that people might decide, hey, I definitely need to go with Epic and not save pennies by going with Threadripper. Plus it means that it's just easier on programmers as well. I mean, this is just a guess because we don't know how uh, programming and applications in Windows or whatever operating system that you use is going to change over the next couple of years. 
but I suspect that the majority of applications are not going to be designed around taking advantage of so many threads at that particular uh, time of the launch. So it's going to be really interesting. And this actually ties in really nicely as well to one final thing that I wanted to add into this video. And that is that the next generation Xbox is said to have a more advanced set of hardware. This actually ties into what I was saying earlier. Uh, than the PlayStation 5. Obviously, this is not confirmed yet, and it's going to be really interesting to see if Microsoft confirms anything at E3. I'm somewhat sketchy. I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to, because remember, one of the reasons Sony uh, said some of the stuff, well, supposedly the main reason Sony said this stuff, is because development kits were now getting in the hands of like a larger pool of, uh, of developers. So it's like, they kind of figured at some point or another, the specs are just going to fully leak online. And actually, there have been a pretty uh, good number of leaks before Sony confirmed some of this stuff. And those leaks, whether it was just like good guesswork or whether they did have inside information, did turn out to be pretty accurate. Anyway, Microsoft probably want to do two things. One, Microsoft don't want Sony to have all of the li limelight for the PlayStation 5. And two, they figure the same thing. Assuming development kits are going to start to filter out to developers at any time in the near future, well, the specs are going to leak. Let's just be totally honest. The NDAs are great and all, but it's really hard to pin down who actually leaked the information when it a, it's done anonymously and most likely by someone who's not even tied to that company. Like it only takes Bob to speak to Bill, who speaks to Tom. Tom is the person who spreads it wider onto the internet and he doesn't even work at the company who originally was the source of the leak. So it's really hard to pin this stuff down. So it's going to be really interesting because once again, according to the, the leak that we've seen, uh, you might remember the development kit, we actually saw uh, SMT is disabled, but there is a hyper scheduler which handles an awful lot of threads with different modes of eight, 16, and finally 24 threads, which might tie into what we've heard about Zen 3. So it's possible, therefore, that the next generation Xbox does have um, some form of Zen 3 implementation. So it could be a hybrid of Zen 2 and Zen 3. It could be pure Zen 3. Or it's possible that all of these rumors are rubbish and don't have any merit. You will notice, though, that the level 4 cache is being listed as 1 gigabyte, which actually ties into another rumor that we will see 3D stacking on some of AMD's future chips. So it's possible, therefore, that that is stacked memory, although we have discussed this previously, so I'm not going to go super in-depth into it into this video. With all of that said, though, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, well, I'd appreciate a like and a subscription. You know, click the subscribe button. It's right there. Click it. Click it. I'll wait. Have you subscribed yet? Okay, good. And, you know, uh, you can also find us down below on social media and uh, Amazon affiliate links as well as uh, Patreon if you decide to support us. That's totally down to you. But hey, if you want to buy a new lawnmower, then well, you can use Amazon affiliate links. And well, yeah. With all that said, though, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.